Host, prepare for a new mission as the story unfolds with Chu Yen, a transmigration agent, accompanied by her loyal assistant system named Seven. In her original world, an accident left Chu Yen in a coma. To awaken from it, she needs to embark on a journey through various worlds, completing tasks assigned by the system to earn points. Her goal, reach 100 million points to return to her original world. Inquiring about her next task, Chu Yen asks Seven about the person she's meant to assist in this new world. Seven reveals that the original host, infatuated with her husband Fu Tingchuan for years, endured deep emotional turmoil due to his ongoing emotional abuse. Despite marrying Fu Tingchuan as desired, the host succumbed to depression, resorting to medication and eventually attempting to take her life provoked by Fu Tingchuan's mistress. Moved by the tragic circumstances, Chu Yen empathizes with the host's plight. Poor girl, she reflects, saddened by the realization that such suffering led to self-harm. Seeking clarity on her mission, Chu Yen learns from Seven that she must fulfill the original host's unmet wishes. Chu Yen found herself in a peculiar situation, inhabiting the body of another woman, tasked with fulfilling her wishes. Among these, making Fu Tingchuan regret his actions and helping the original host find genuine love were paramount. Upon completing this mission, she'll be rewarded with one million points. Please give it your best effort, said Seven. At Fu Tingchuan's home, tension thickened the air between Chu Yan and her husband. Let's get a divorce, he declared, oblivious to Chu Yan's true identity. I'll handle both the Fu family and the Chu family. We'll just say we've been married for so long without being able to conceive a child. Chu Yen, maintaining her composure, responded calmly, unable to conceive a child? Her question carried a weighty undertone. Are you suggesting I undergo parthenogenesis all on my own? Fu Tingchuan's proposal for divorce revealed his true intentions, highlighting a year of neglect towards the original host in order to marry the other woman. It was truly outrageous and eye-opening. So, what do you want in order to agree to a divorce? He inquired, offering an apartment and a sum of cash. I can offer you up to three million, but don't get too greedy. Chu Yen calmly stated, Deal, I'll sign the divorce contract right now, as she proceeded to sign the papers, surprising Fu Tingchuan, who had assumed she harbored secret feelings for him all along. Well, never mind, he thought, relieved at the lack of emotional outburst. It's better if she doesn't cry or make a scene so I don't have to waste time on her, he concluded, informing Chu Yen of their plan to visit the Civil Affairs Bureau for formal divorce procedures. Finally, I can be with Jenning officially. She and I can openly date in the sunlight, Fu Tingchuan thought as he eagerly anticipated his new life with Jenning as he left. Left alone, Chu Yen said with a straight face, in such a hurry to leave? He's probably going to meet the mistress and share the good news with her. Pathetic. Seven inquired about their next move post-divorce, prompting Chu Yan's plan to unfold. Chu Yan pondered her next steps. Let's start by moving out, she decided her resolve firm. Then I'll change into different clothes and pay a visit to Fu Tingchuan's mistress. I won't let the scumbag and the mistress live a happy life. At Nova Club, Seven reminded Chu Yen of the membership requirement. Undeterred, Chu Yen opted not to spend her points recklessly, instead deciding to find a temporary date to gain entry. I only have 9 million points now, and the goal is still far away from me. I won't spend them recklessly, she thought. Fully prepared and dressed for the occasion, Chu Yen awaited her opportunity by the roadside. Observing an approaching vehicle, she noticed the exceptionally handsome passenger and said to herself, This guy is quite exceptional. He's the one. Stepping into the road and facing the oncoming vehicle, she pretended to fall in front of it, prompting the driver to brake. As she rose, she approached the passenger's window and accused him of hitting her. Are you sure? the man asked. Though she made it clear she wasn't seeking compensation, just a ride to Nova Club. However, the man, seemingly unmoved, pushed her away and sped off, leaving Chu Yen puzzled by his rejection. Before she could dwell on the encounter, another car stopped and its passenger offered her a ride to Nova Club, which she accepted graciously. 
Arriving at Nova Club, Chu Yen was invited to a luxurious box to stay for a while. Before entering, Seven informed her that the box was long reserved for Fu Ting Chuan. Inside, she spotted Fu Ting Chuan and a server by his side, suspecting her to be his mistress, which was confirmed by Seven. Bai Jianing, a third-year college student from a humble background, had been working at Nova Club for three months to support herself and her mother's medical expenses, Seven explained. Chu Yen observed Jianing's delicate appearance and admired her resilience. Learning that Fu Tingchuan harbored heroic dreams from childhood, Chu Yen speculated that his attraction to Jianing was understandable. Seven queried Chu Yen about her plans, prompting Chu Yen to respond through their silent communication, stir up that couple a bit. As Chu Yen entered the room, Fu Tingchuan couldn't help but notice her presence, wondering why she was there. Drawing closer, he questioned her intentions. Chu Yen, with a playful demeanor, teased Fu Tingchuan about stalking him, reassuring him that she was there for amusement rather than to catch him in any wrongdoing. Leaning in, Chu Yen whispered provocatively to Fu Tingchuan, suggesting that he treat her like a stranger to avoid jealousy from his mistress. Her words left Fu Tingchuan visibly startled. Bai Jianing, aware of Fu Tingchuan's marital status, questioned his interaction with Chu Yen. Fu Tingchuan brushed off her concern, instructing her to focus on her duties. Bai Jianing, feeling a bit shy, apologized for interrupting them, to which Fu Tingchuan reassured her that she had done nothing wrong. Chu Yen couldn't help but challenge Fu Tingchuan's assertion, questioning the morality of seducing a married man and being a mistress. Fu Tingchuan, visibly irritated, defended Jianing, insisting their relationship was pure and nothing inappropriate had occurred between them. Amused by Fu Tingchuan's logic, Chu Yen sarcastically commended him, agreeing to adhere to his standards. However, her attention was soon drawn to the familiar figure of the man who she had encountered earlier. Determined to use him to her advantage, Chu Yen approached him on the balcony. Unexpectedly, the man grabbed Chu Yan's hands and pinned her to a nearby sofa, leaving her shocked and unable to react. Fu Tingchuan, witnessing the scene, grew furious at the man's inappropriate behavior towards Chu Yan. Chu Yan withdrew her hands from the man and calmly asked if he was trying to hurt her. "You started it first," the man retorted as he rose. "I don't care. You tripped me, so you're obliged to help me up," Chu Yan stated firmly. You bully your car hit me, and now you hit me, an innocent woman. She added, feigning tears. The man, puzzled by Chu Yan's demeanor, wondered who she was. He had encountered women trying to manipulate him before, but this was a new approach. With a stoic expression, he reached out and held her hand. Come on, he said tersely as he lent his hands to help her get up. As Chu Yan leaned in and planted a kiss on his cheek, the man was taken aback by her audacity. Thank you for being a gentleman," Chu Yen said with a wink, leaving the man bewildered. "This is my final warning to you. Don't waste your effort on me, or else," he said with a stoic expression. Before the man could finish his word, Fu Tingchuan forcefully grabbed Chu Yen's hand. "We're leaving," he demanded, his face contorted in anger. Chu Yen, surprised by Fu Tingchuan's sudden appearance, questioned him. "Who are you, sir?" I'm not leaving with you," she said, acting as if she didn't know him. Fu Tingchuan confronted Chu Yen, accusing her of intentionally flirting with another man to provoke him because she didn't want a divorce. His anger was palpable as he demanded an explanation. "Get a hold of yourself. I want a divorce, and I genuinely want to pursue him," Chu Yen asserted, pointing to the strange man. The strange man, surprised by Chu Yan's boldness, couldn't help but admire her audacity. Shameless woman, cheating on me right in front of my face! Fu Tingchuan thought in frustration, raising his hand to strike Chu Yan as he called her names. However, before he could act, the man standing beside Chu Yan intervened. Men should never lay a finger on a woman, he admonished Fu Tingchuan, his disgust evident. Fu Tingchuan, momentarily silenced by the man's stern words, attempted to justify himself. "Mr. Bo, you're right. It's just that this woman is." But he was swiftly cut off. "I don't care who she is to you, but hitting a woman is my taboo." The man, referred to as Mr. Bo, said as he loosened his hand from Fu Tingchuan. 
Scram, Mr. Bow commanded with an air of superiority. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Fu Tingchuan apologized and bowed his head. It was clear that Mr. Bo held significant influence even over someone like Fu Tingchuan. As Fu Tingchuan departed, he left a lingering warning in a low voice for Chu Yen to behave herself, still seething with anger. Are you leaving? Can you give me a ride? Chu Yen inquired softly, having remained quiet throughout the ordeal. Mr. Bo's response was cryptic. Do you know what it means to ride in the same car as me? He questioned. In Jensen City, many feared Mr. Bo, aware of the enemies who desired his demise. Once you get in my car, you might end up in a fatal accident at any moment, he warned Chu Yen. I'm not afraid, and I'll protect you, she declared confidently. As they drove through the city, Chu Yen occupied the passenger's seat beside Mr. Bo, undisturbed by the rapid pace. Mr. Bo suddenly queried about her perfume, leaning in to discern its scent. What is she asked, shocked by his moves? Threateningly, he warned Chu Yen that she'd bear the consequences if anything were awry with her fragrance. Chu Yen reassured Mr. Bo, insisting she was only there to protect him. However, she harbored a secret, the fragrance she wore was a gift from the system, lacking any aphrodisiac properties, rendering it useless in her eyes. Mr. Bo, sensing her determination, questioned her intentions. You've been saying repeatedly that you want to protect me. Do you really want to pursue me? He probed. Chu Yen didn't back down. Is that not okay? She countered, refusing to accept a denial from him. Suddenly the car jolted, alarming both occupants. What's going on Chen? Mr. Bo demanded of his driver, who promptly informed him that they were being pursued. There are three cars behind us, Chen informs Mr. Bo, who immediately instructs Chu Yen to hold on tight and grab the handrail. Without hesitation, she complies, her excitement evident. As they navigate through the city, one of the pursuing cars draws dangerously close. Through its window, a man brandishes a gun, taking aim at their vehicle as another hits it from behind. Mr. Bo warns Chu Yen to duck down, ensuring she stays away from the window. Chu Yen obeys, resting her head on Mr. Bo's lap. Impressed by Chu Yan's composure, Mr. Bo marvels at her unexpectedly strong nerve in such a perilous situation. Suddenly, Seven senses imminent danger and alerts Chu Yen of the presence of a knife flying towards her side of the window. Reacting swiftly, Chu Yan shouts a warning and moves to shield Mr. Bo, but she ends up getting stabbed in the back by the knife. Angered by her actions, Mr. Bo berates Chu Yen for her recklessness, but she reminds him of her promise to protect him. Weakness overcomes Chu Yen as she begins to bleed, and Mr. Bo realizes the knife was poisoned. After escaping pursuit, Mr. Bo takes Chu Yen to the hospital. Concerned about why her blood was tested, Chu Yen wonders if there was poison on the knife and if she's in danger. Mr. Bo reassures her that they'll have answers once the test results are in. Chu Yen admits she's scared of death, prompting Mr. Bo to question why she risked her life to protect him and what she wants from him. Chu Yan's response is straightforward, she wants his love. The original host not only wants Fu Tingchuan to regret but also desires genuine love. If I want to date someone of course I'll choose a man who's outstanding and capable of making my heart race. You're the perfect fit, she thought. Perplexed, Mr. Bo laughs it off, suggesting she might as well ask for money and property. Chu Yen clarifies she's not interested in his wealth, she just wants his genuine affection and if need be she can support him. Mr. Bo remains skeptical, with a stoic expression confirmed about her offering financial support instead. Chu Yen assures him she's willing to help if needed, though she emphasizes the need for frugality since she doesn't have much money herself. A knock on the door interrupts their conversation, a man shows with with a document for Mr. Bo, prompting Mr. Bo to step out and talk to the man. He receives information about the woman, Chu Yen, inside the room. Chu Yen the Chu family I remember the Chu family is quite chaotic internally with many children right, he asked his messenger. His messenger reminds him of the Chu family's chaotic history, particularly Mr. Chu's promiscuity and Chu Yan's upbringing as a tool for arranged marriages. 
She was previously married to Fu Tingchuan from the prestigious Fu family but their marriage fell apart due to his infidelity leading to a divorce settlement. Meanwhile, Mr. Bo's friend Tang Zhe, who works as a doctor in the hospital, arrives with the results of Chu Yan's blood test. Tang Zhe remarks on the unusual sight of Mr. Bo rushing into the hospital with a woman, hinting at the potential gossip it could stir up. Mr. Bo quickly cuts through the banter, focusing on the matter at hand, the blood test results. Tang Zhe confirms Mr. Bo's suspicions that the knife was indeed poisoned specifically with a newly developed hallucinogenic toxin. He explains that in large doses it could be lethal while in smaller amounts it's addictive. Mr. Bo inquires about a possible antidote, but Tang Zhe informs him that there isn't one currently available. Alone in the room, Seven assures Chu Yen that she doesn't need to fear the poison. Her body fragrance, bestowed by the system, has the ability to neutralize toxins, albeit with a catch, it transforms them into an aphrodisiac. The potency of the aphrodisiac effect depends on the strength of the poison, and it only lasts for 24 hours. Seven advises Chu Yen to endure the aphrodisiac effect, assuring her that it will pass. Chu Yen, feeling incredulous about suddenly being aroused while poisoned, worries about Mr. Bo's suspicions and decides to quietly leave the hospital before the aphrodisiac fully takes hold. As she makes her way down the hospital hallway, the aphrodisiac effect begins to affect her, causing weakness in her knees. Mr. Bo intercepts her, concerned about her leaving despite the poison not being neutralized. He supports her and insists she stay in bed, but seeing her expression flushed, he asks what is wrong with her to which she replies not feeling well. I will get a doctor, he said, but Chu Yen, feeling embarrassed and not wanting to reveal the truth, insists on going home to rest as the poison can't be countered anyway. Speechless at her request, Mr. Bo ultimately agrees to take her home, carrying her in his arms. Once at her home, he settles her into a chair, but Chu Yen insists she can take care of herself and bids him goodbye despite Mr. Bo's growing suspicions about her behavior as her information doesn't show any inconsistencies as he decides to find out what she's up to. He acknowledges that Chu Yan's behavior seems suspicious, but her information doesn't reveal any inconsistencies. Determined to uncover the truth, Mr. Bo resolves to stay vigilant. Concerned for her well-being as she got hurt because of him, Mr. Bo decides to stay and watch over her, refusing to leave her alone. Mr. Bo resolves to stay vigilant and ensure Chu Yan's safety, despite her attempts to push him away. Mr. Bo expresses concern to Chu Yan, who interprets it as a lack of trust. Feeling the effects of the aphrodisiac, she trembles slightly as she picks up a knife before retreating to her room. She turns on the water and sits in the bathtub unaware that Mr. Bo silently follows her. Inside, she attempts to alleviate the discomfort by harming herself, but Mr. Bo intervenes, preventing her from hurting herself further. With tears in her eyes, Chu Yen admits feeling terrible and not wanting to embarrass herself in front of Mr. Bo. He carries her back to bed and suggests she take a Valium, promising to fetch water for her. Overwhelmed, Chu Yen finds solace in holding on to Mr. Bo, glad that the poison was on her. Despite the help of the system, she's still suffering. She reflects that if the poison were on him, the situation could be worse, she thought. Their intense gaze is interrupted by Mr. Bo's promise not to pursue whether Chu Yen was acting under someone's instruction or provoking Fu Tingchuan genuinely. He assures her they will find a way to detoxify her and ensure her well-being as he leaves the room. Chu Yen resolves to win his heart eventually as she has plenty of time. Just as Mr. Bo reaches the door, the door opens as he encounters Fu Tingchuan face to face setting the stage for an unexpected confrontation. After encountering Mr. Bo, Fu Tingchuan seethed with anger. I can't believe Bo Sian is here. Chu Yen must have cheated on me with him, he muttered, his frustration evident. Bursting into Chu Yan's room, he confronted her, his voice laced with accusation. Chu Yen you tramp, he yelled, his tone betraying his emotions. Chu Yen, weakened by the lingering effects of the aphrodisiac, could barely muster a response. She felt drained, unable to defend herself against Fu Tingchuan's barrage of questions. What is Mr. Bo doing here? 
What are you? Fu Tingchuan demanded, gripping Chu Yan's hand forcefully. I got hurt and he brought me back. What did you think we were doing? Chu Yan retorted weakly, her words tinged with exhaustion as she flung his hand away. You are a married woman, you know? Fu Tingchuan reminded her sharply. I don't. Perhaps you can show me how to be a married woman. Chu Yen responded with a flirtatious tone, further infuriating Fu Ting Chuan. Before the tension could escalate further, a sobbing voice interrupted from outside the room. Chuan, the voice called out, revealing itself to be Bai Jaining. She entered the room, tears streaming down her face, explaining how she had been waiting in the car before being attacked by a stranger. He beat me up after I got out of the car, Bai Jaining recounted, her voice trembling with fear. Fu Tingchuan's expression softened with concern as he asked who the assailant was and if she had seen his face. Bai Jaining revealed that the attacker had delivered a message, this is what you get for stealing Miss Chu's husband. Chu Yan hired me to teach you a lesson. Next time when I see you with her husband I will ruin this pretty face of yours. Fu Tingchuan's heart sank at the revelation, realizing the depth of the situation and the danger Chu Yan's actions had placed them all in. Bai Jaining's false accusation sent him into a rage. Chu Yan, how dare you hire someone to beat my woman? Apologize to Jianning immediately. Otherwise, I will beat you as your man did to her, he thundered, his anger palpable, even though he was unaware of the truth. Chu Yan, though confronted with his fury, maintained a fierce demeanor. But Bai Jaining's smug smirk betrayed her true intentions. What are you going to do, Chu Yan? Beat me in front of Chuan, she taunted, her pretense unraveling. Without hesitation, Chu Yan raised her hand and delivered a sharp slap to Bai Jaining's cheek as she screamed. Yes, that's exactly what I'll do. What? Why can't I slap you, she asserted unapologetic. As she held on to her stinging hand, you came to my apartment and slandered me in my face. You brought this upon yourself. Since you are here today, let's talk about what you did to me. Chu Yen confronted by Jaining about her actions, accusing her of seducing her husband and deliberately provoking her into a depressive state. What do you have to say about that? she asked. If you didn't provoke her, the real Chu Yen wouldn't have committed suicide. You caused her to die, and I only slapped you in your face. It's a good deal for you, she thought. Tears welled in by Jaining's eyes as she vehemently denied the allegations. Trust me, Chuan. I didn't do any of that, she said feigning vulnerability. Fu Ting Chuan, now coming to Bai Jaining's defense, reminded Chu Yen that she needed proof to substantiate her claims. He cautioned her that the burden of proof lay on her shoulders, especially if she had indeed hired someone to harm Bai Jaining. You want proof? She challenged. There's a security camera in the garage. I'll ask the building manager to check it. Let's see who really attacked your little mistress. With determination in her eyes, Chu Yen was ready to uncover the truth, regardless of the consequences. Undeterred by Bai Jianning's challenge, Chu Yen resolved to seek the truth despite her doubts about the effectiveness of her plan. As she left to retrieve evidence from the security camera, she harbored suspicions that Bai Jianning might have already tampered with it or bribed the building manager. Nevertheless, she proceeded with her plan, determined to exhaust every possibility. Upon reaching Mr. Bo's location, Chu Yen appealed to his sense of justice, leveraging their past interactions. I helped you before, and now I need your assistance, she implored. Chu Yen laid out her request, acknowledging Mr. Bo's influence and power, hoping he could arrange for the restoration of the damaged security camera footage. I promise to leave you alone if you help me this time unless you want me to stay around. Did you take a fancy on me, she said as she looked up at him flirtatiously. Mr. Bo, recognizing Chu Yan's cunning nature, hesitated but eventually agreed to help, handing her the drugs he told her about before the ruckus before attending to her request. He made calls and arranged for the investigation of the security camera footage. Later that day, the restored footage was presented to everyone, revealing Bai Jianning's deceitful actions. Fu Tingchuan, initially skeptical, was stunned by the evidence before him. Is this the Bai Jianning I know? 
I can't believe this crude woman in the footage is actually her, Fu Tingchuan thought. No. This footage is fake, it's a synthetic video. That wasn't me, she protested, unable to accept the truth. Despite her denial, the undeniable evidence exposed her lie, leaving Fu Tingchuan grappling with the betrayal of trust and the realization of Chu Yan's innocence. By Jiening's desperate attempt to seize the phone displaying the incriminating video was thwarted by Mr. Bo's guard, who promptly intervened. The man who had assisted by Jiening was soon apprehended and brought before them, with Mr. Bo's stoic expression as he smoked a cigarette, pleading for mercy and expressing his fear for his life. I wouldn't have dared to do it if I knew that, please have mercy on me, the man pleaded with a fearful expression. Bai Jianning, in a last-ditch effort to salvage the situation, implored Fu Tingchuan to disregard the man's testimony, labeling them all as liars and accusing Chu Yen of orchestrating a deception. Fu Tingchuan, however, was no longer swayed by Bai Jianning's manipulative tactics. Bai Jianning, I never expected you to be so vile and disgusting. I was such a fool to be with you, he exclaimed, his disgust evident as he pushed her away. Get out, he said. Can you please get them out of here? Chu Yen requested Mr. Bo, seeking to remove the toxic presence from the room. Mr. Bo promptly ordered his guards to escort Bai Jianning, her accomplice, and Fu Tingchuan out of the room. Chu Yen, I, Fu Tingchuan tried to explain before being shoved out of the room, leaving Chu Yen alone with him. As Chu Yen embraced Mr. Bo, seeking solace, she requested his companionship for a while longer, knowing that her drugs were taking effect as she would soon fall asleep and he can leave then. Without a word, Mr. Bo acquiesced, allowing Chu Yen to rest against him. Internally, he resigned himself to play along, finding solace in the knowledge that he wouldn't have to deal with Chu Yen again after this encounter. I'll make an exception today, he thought. The next morning, Chu Yen woke up in her bed, properly covered. Seven, how long have I been sleeping? she asked. You have slept for almost twenty-four hours, and the toxin in your body is gone now. You are fully recovered, he replied happily. Upon hearing a knock on her door, hold on, she said as she straightened her wrinkled clothes. She went to open the door for her visitor after freshening up. To her surprise, the woman at the door informed her that Mr. Bo had appointed her as Chu Yan's personal doctor and she would conduct a blood test to check for toxins in her body. Nervous about the prospect of a blood test revealing the absence of toxins in her body, Chu Yan struggled as she couldn't explain her situation to the doctor, knowing that any discrepancy could raise suspicion. In the parking lot, Chu Yan settled into her car, seven inquiring about their destination. As a call came through, she heard Mr. Bo's voice, questioning her refusal of his offer. Firmly, she reiterated her decision to distance herself after their previous encounter, refusing any favors from him. Mr. Bo ended the call abruptly, seemingly unfazed. Are you really going to give up on Mr. Bo? Seven asked, his question hanging in the air. Chuyen shook her head. No, not at all, she assured Seven, before requesting Mr. Bo's current location. Seven informed her that Mr. Bo was dining with Mu Yuyu, the eldest daughter of the influential Mu family, at the Four Seasons Hotel. It was revealed that Mr. Bo, the illegitimate son of Jensen City's wealthiest man, had faced challenges in his youth, with Mu Yuyu providing support during those times. Their families had arranged their engagement, though it had not been made public. Understanding the complexity of the situation, Chu Yen reminded Seven of the delicate nature of Mr. Bo and Mu Yuyu's relationship, suggesting they were merely acquaintances. At the Four Seasons Hotel, after dressing elegantly, Chu Yen found the pair and approached their table with a friendly greeting. Mr. Bo was visibly surprised by her presence. Why are you here? he asked, puzzled by her arrival. Chu Yen placed a stack of cash on the table leaving him to wonder why, explaining, I promise to support you, and I always keep my word. Consider this for your meal expenses, casually dismissing Mu Yuyu's presence. Mr. Bo accepted her gesture gratefully. Chu Yen then reminded him to inform her in advance of future meetings so she could prepare accordingly, maintaining her composure despite Mu Yuyu's evident irritation. 
Mu Yuyu, unable to hide her frustration, inquired about Chu Yan's identity, her frustration evident beneath the surface. Sensing the tension, Chu Yan whispered to Mr. Bo, urging him not to reveal that he was her kept man, which left him stunned. She then excused herself, leaving the pair to their dinner. Outside, it rained heavily as Chu Yan stood in the rain, a stark contrast to the hotel's warmth. Mr. Bo approached her with an umbrella, concerned about her being in the rain. I wanted to see if you'd come out for me, Chu Yen remarked playfully, testing the boundaries of their agreement to separate. Mr. Bo reminded her of their agreement to part ways, but Chu Yen countered, suggesting his presence was of his own volition. Mr. Bo, worried about her well-being, particularly because of her wound, insisted on taking her to the hospital. They headed towards his car, parked nearby, while Mu Yuyu, already seated inside, inquired about Chu Yan's presence if she was riding with them. Mr. Bo, firmly decisive, insisted that Mu Yuyu to use a different vehicle, leaving her both shocked and annoyed as they drove off and left her behind. In the car, Chu Yan shivered from the cold. Mr. Bo's earlier gesture of kindness contrasted with the icy atmosphere between them. You stood in the rain, remember, he said. Mr. Bo offered Chu Yen his shirt, urging her to change out of her rain-soaked clothes. With a playful grin, Chu Yen mused about the challenge of changing in the car's limited space. Mr. Bo promised to avert his gaze for her privacy, turning his back as she quickly changed into his shirt, her demeanor a blend of confidence and charm. I'm done, she announced, prompting him to turn back around, meeting his gaze with a bold look of her own. Chu Yen playfully questioned Mr. Bo's calmness in the face of an attractive woman, to which he responded that he wasn't interested in married women. Undeterred, she hinted at the possibility of him changing his mind. Sensing his tension, tapping his chest lightly, eliciting a stern warning from Mr. Bo, though Chu Yen remained undaunted not knowing if he was serious about the warning. In a bold move, Chu Yen leaned in for a kiss. Mr. Bo initially resisted breaking the embrace. Undeterred, Chu Yen playfully challenged his masculinity. In response, he merely drew her face closer in a flirtatious manner, locking eyes with her in an intense gaze that left her with a mischievous grin. As they navigated this tension-filled moment, the complexity of their relationship deepened, leaving both aware of the stakes involved. Thank you for being part of this adventure with us. If you enjoyed what you watch, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. The next episode holds even more excitement and twists so stay with us as we continue this thrilling journey together. Until then, keep the anticipation alive and we'll see you in the next episode.